Welcome to episode 295 of Grid Talk. Today, we're here to analyze the qualifying results for the 2023 Canadian Grand Prix. My name is Ruby Price, and joining me, we have Grid Talk co host Louis Edwards. Hello. Carl King from the Monkey Seat Podcast. Um, evening. And joining from Canada, Jonah from the Soft Tire Podcast. Good afternoon. Good afternoon where it is and good evening to the rest of us. Um, before we get into the episode, we must thank our sponsor for this episode, Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your championship finals info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines and the latest matchup reports for this year's NBA and Stanley Cup finals. Bet Online is your sports intel headquarters this season, as we have you covered for all your inside sports wagering needs, from basketball and hockey to MLB, UFC, and boxing. The fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your home. Get into the action today, head to the website or use your mobile device to join and be sure to use our promo code BLEAV, that's B-L-E-A-B, to receive your 50% bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. But first, if you enjoy this podcast, we'd love it if you could take five to leave us a five-star rating on Spotify or a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. And if you're one of the 72% of people who aren't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider helping us out with a like and a subscribe. So with two red flags, mixed conditions, and Carlos Sainz seemingly occupying every inch of the circuit shield will nerve, there was certainly a lot to talk about as we saw surprises in all three qualifying sessions today. But with so many post-session investigations taking place, it is worth taking these following positions with a tiny asterisk whilst we await the results from the stewards of what some looked like completely slam dunk issues. Some of them looked... You know, a bit more questionable, but I guess we'll find out. Hopefully everything's consistent because we've seen that before, right? But let's get on with it. Starting with Alfa Romeo, then Louis. Guan Yu Zhou starting at the back in P20 and Bottas starting P15. Zhou suffering from power unit issues in Q1 and Bottas suffering from the changing conditions of Q2. Is this where Alfa should be? What can they do from here tomorrow in the potentially dry conditions? Yeah, it was... was, um... Another one at the back for Alfa Romeo and yet more sort of nagging car issues, which has have really um set them back um big time. And yeah, the, the issues with Joe were of course really completely not his fault. They had to do a bit of a a reset in the pit lane, but I think the car then just didn't get the tire temperature to uh, be able to set a, a good lap in Q1. And then Bottas not really being on the right tires in um in Q2 meant that he was um he was out. Uh, it's kind of typical Alfa Romeo things at the moment. Uh, it's not a lot to um expect from them and not a lot to get excited for. Um the race tomorrow, while there is the potential for a lot of overtakes, I don't see Alfa Romeo being one of the teams that do it. Yeah, definitely. They were they did have a very strong showing here last season. Um, but there was a late safety car involved, but that's just not what's happened here so far. Carl, there was an investigation into Joe for bringing out the red flag and getting his car going again. Tell me, do you think this kind of thing warrants an investigation? Or when you consider Baku 2021 and Monaco 2021 qualifying, like red, red flag incidents in qualifying sessions causing pole, do they require investigating, basically? It doesn't really require an investigation in my mind because... At the point where the flag was called, it wasn't called early. It was called pretty much as it should have been. There was a car in a silly place. And the rule is if they can get it started and no one touched the car. So, and he did get it started and go, well, I like, what's the investigation? I don't get what the investigation is even about because what the investigation, whether it went too early, when it, I don't get it, you know. Um, so, no, I think Joe was fine. I think the safety of the track was fine and calling a red in a qualifying doesn't really affect too much especially as that was so early on as well it wasn't like it was really late into the session we, they still had seven or eight minutes left if i remember correctly or 7 11 i think wasn't it um so yeah i can't see the, there is no issue for me they called that sensibly i think had that happened towards the end i think there would be more questions about it um, but the car was in a really dodgy place at that point with a suspected not going anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the stewards took all of that into account. 
Moving on to Williams then, Jonah. Alex Albon producing a storming lap in Q2 on slick tyres during questionably wet conditions, um, resulting in a P10. Logan Sargent, though, a driver without the Williams upgrades, only managing P19 in the end. Mixed fortunes for the team. Uh, well, you know, I'd like to think it's mixed fortunes. I'd like to see Williams do well. I mean, I feel like the whole Formula One fandom would like to see Williams do well. Uh, Alex Albon, though, in terms of strategy and, and thought process for making that call to say, hey, let's go slicks. I know it's probably going to get worse. That was genius. I mean, it clearly shows getting himself into the top 10, like good on him. That's a great, great, great call. It shows experience, something that Logan doesn't have quite yet, as well as I mean, hey, it's hard. In my opinion, I think it's going to be hard to see the Williams upgrades in these kind of conditions. If Montreal gets dry on Sunday, then maybe we can see the difference between the two cars. Uh, I think, honestly, that was all up to Albon's call. Um, great lap overall. I mean, he still talk, he still put that Williams in the in Q3 or in the top 10. But um, overall, I think we need some dry running to see if the Williams uh, upgrades are working or if actually the last spec car is the better one. But overall, I mean, good on Alex. He, it, he's a guy that I want to see succeed. Um, and he did really well. I think he completely deserves that. Yeah, absolutely. Louis sticking with that Albon lap. There were moments where he was driving millimeters from track conditions that would have put him in the wall. Um, a very impressive showing from Alex, but starting P10, you would expect him to only really go backwards tomorrow, wouldn't you? Oh, you never know with um with Alex Albon. We've seen, you know, in past um your races that, that that Williams is actually quite quick in a straight line. We think back to uh, Baku or Australia. Um, Albon was incredibly fast, and the Williams was generally quite quick in the um in a straight line. I think there's definitely potential there for him to uh to hold on. Will it be you know tenth? Maybe not, but I don't expect him to absolutely drop like a stone. I think he's going to be able to put up a really good fight. And you know, on his lap, it was it was absolutely incredible because. When he was setting his earlier laps, it was still quite damp, especially around turns one and two. Drivers that were on the intermediates were still kicking up quite a bit of spray. So he did incredibly well to be able to navigate it and then absolutely pin it for the uh, the other two sectors that were absolutely dry. And uh, yeah, it was a great job by Albon. Pity then couldn't get out for um, for Q three, but it was a it was a bit of a mess anyway. But uh, I think if he had got a lap down, I think uh, potentially he could have done, uh, could have got himself quite a, a lot higher. And of course, we are still also look to signs potential penalty, which may uh, bump him up the grid a bit. Yeah, I mean, as mentioned, like most of these positions are subject to the rest of the investigations. But Carl De Vries starting P18 and Sonoda involved in another post-race investigation in P16. Alpha Tauri, um just not simply at the races today. Which is, I, I mean, De Vries is always out of the races. Like, I don't even know why he's there. Um, but Sonoda has been showing a lot of improvement recently. And I was surprised like I, I don't know. I don't quite know where he was in qualifying. There, there didn't seem to be too much that was jumping out at me as if, like, oh yeah, he's not improving. And um, I, I don't know if he just had a bit of a crap day or got stuck in that whole, you know, impeding session um, that everyone else was seemingly getting involved in. Um, but I mean, they. I mean, it, yeah, they're just not the race today. Um, they were doing okay in practice three. Um, so I know Sonoda was. So I, I think it was just more luck than judgment for Sonoda and typical debris being typical debris. Absolutely. Um, that nickname is continuing to stick, as we can see. Um, Jonah, Pierre Gasly called for a race ban for Carlos Sainz, granted in the heat at the moment, but he did catch that slow moving Ferrari at about 300 kilometers per hour. Temperatures were going to be hot. Um, he's only managed P17 after the impeding, but his teammate Ocon is P7. Mixed fortunes for Alpine. Where do you see them ending up tomorrow? Um, well, I mean, we, we know that Alpine's a quick car. We've seen, um, especially with Esteban being on the podium in Monaco, uh, that's not an easy track to get on the podium on. Um, it's probably the hardest one in the entire calendar uh, to get a podium on. But I think in terms of Esteban, I think he's exactly where he should be. That Alpine has the pace to be top six, top seven, eight or nine. Uh, and I think, you know, he put it exactly where he should be. Now, 
In terms of Pierre, um, I think a race ban might be a little far. I understand heat of the moment. And don't get me wrong, what Carlos did is extremely dangerous and should absolutely be penalized. Uh, not to mention, he did it like three times. Um, so I think he should get a minimum 10 place grade penalty. That's just me. But um, it's really unfortunate to see Pierre that low. He deserves to be way higher. He's shown his race pace. A lot of bad luck, uh, whether that's the Alpine curse. We've seen uh, drivers in the Alpines don't exactly have the best luck. Um, kind of like the guy who just blocked him. But um, yeah, I think that, you know, the the Alpines, I, I see Esteban has a real chance tomorrow. Um, we don't know about the conditions. Like I said, uh, Canadian weather all over the place, really, uh, especially when you're that close to, to the St. Lawrence River. But um, Esteban did a great job, unfortunate for Pierre. But I think that where Esteban is, is where the Alpines should be. Yeah, absolutely. And time and time again, we've seen um, Pierre Gasly having to come from a position where he shouldn't be on the Sunday. Esteban Ocon starting up and just sort of maximizing what he can do with their package. Um, but Louis, elation and commiseration for Haas today. Um, Nico Hulkenberg in a surprise P2, Kevin Magnussen down in P14, perfectly timed across the line just before that red flag came out. He'll be very happy with that. Is that podium going to uh, finally appear? Well, is, is the question that everyone's asking. I mean, he's been further up the grid and still not, um, and still not gotten the podium. So uh, my uh, my hopes aren't um, too high for a um, for a Haas podium, but you never know. Um, you know, it could um, be very changeable tomorrow. Um, I don't think anyone's a hundred percent certain of what the weather's going to do. So. There's definitely opportunities there for Haas. And in the broadcast, they were saying his uh, Nico's race engineer was saying that both Kevin and um, Nico love these sort of changeable conditions. And that's reflected obviously very well for Nico in qualifying today, getting there. I think it was must have been one, two seconds before the red uh, red flag came out. But unfortunately, they just didn't quite get it right for Magnussen. In um in Q two today, it was all about being on those soft tires as early as possible, and they just and they just waited that a little bit too long, and uh, he's paid the price for that. But I expect Magnussen to try and make his way forward. I don't think that Haas is as bad as we've seen um of recent. I think it's um quite competitive, and yet again, this is another case of Hulkenberg putting in Q three and Magnussen just not being able to to do that yeah definitely and a lot of teams missing out because of the changing conditions in q2 another team that have done the same really carl aston martin uh the home boy lance stroll only managing p13 and alonso sitting nicely in p3 stroll getting unlucky with the weather but he certainly didn't help himself dropping it and impeding esteban ocon as well during the same session um Penalty for Stroll, do you reckon? And what can Fernando do from P3? Um, Stroll, yeah, running out of talent, um, I think was a phrase that was used. And yeah, I, I couldn't even work out what he even, how he even ended up slip sliding across. I mean, P13, unlucky for some, but after that slide, he never really recovered. Whether he'll get a penalty, I think he might get off it. I don't think it was strong enough but maybe I'm wrong. Um, and obviously Alonso in P3, um, he probably would have got P2, if not P1, no, P2, um, had there not been the red flag and had there not been the rain incoming. Um, so I think he probably would have been P2. He's, I mean, he's going to fly past the Hulk um, there and he's going to just sit in P2. I think he might get his P2 and not his P3 this time. Um, but you know, and that's an there's not really, I don't think Hamilton's really going to be on these skirt, skirt tails, so um, yeah, I think it's quite a strong position, and yeah, proving the man's definitely not ready for timing yet. Running out of talent, words from Carl King and others, Jonah sticking with the Aston Martins, a disappointing weekend so far for your homecoming driver. He has previously excelled in the wet. Was it just poor timing that cost him today? Uh, I mean, listen, I'm going to be as, as unbiased as possible, even though there's a Canadian flag behind me. Stroll has never been the fastest driver in any team that he that he's been a part of, which is whichever one his dad owns. Let's be real. Um, but he's just 
is it unlucky? I mean, we've seen him get pulled in Turkey in these kind of conditions on the inter slicks. I really don't think he's adjusted very well to the, to the 2022 slash 2023 spec cars. Um, not as well as some other drivers have, but yeah, it's a little bit underwhelming to be honest. Um, he can do better. I know he can do better. It's just like, he, he's not necessarily letting us down. It's just the pace is there. We haven't seen it yet. Um, and to have a gap that big between you and your teammate in a car that everyone knows is competitive. Uh, and on some days, the second best car on track, really, it, it's kind of at that point, it's not to be upfront. It's unacceptable. Like you got to be faster than that. Really. You have to be quicker than that, especially uh, in a car that good um, that's under you. He's never had a car this good his whole career other than maybe the pink Mercedes a few years ago, but really this car is, is good. And putting it that low is just, it's not going to work. He's got to get his stuff together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and obviously Aston Martin expecting their best results to come earlier in the season. The time's possibly passed for Stroll to deliver on the promise of this car, but you know, Fernando Alonso showing where this car is currently still at. And obviously, Fernando Alonso, as I'm sure many many uh, F1 fans will agree, just brings another couple of tenths to the car in the first place. And I can't believe I just said that as a Hamilton fan from 2007. But we'll just look at Sergio Perez for now, starting in P12 in what must be a different car to his teammate. Because, Louis, what is going on with the Mexican? His Bosses are all saying, well, the pressure's off now. He's got nothing to lose. And all weekend, we've seen Checo struggling compared to his teammate. And he abandoned what was going to be a faster lap in Q3. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's three in a row now. And it's um and it's not uh, exactly a, um, a trend of results that we would have been expecting from this Red Bull. Um, and at the moment, you know, we looked at question... Um, you know, we questioned the likes of Albon and the Gasly when they weren't, you know, when they were bottom end of Q, um, you know, bottom end of Q3 against Max in a lesser car than what they've got right now. They've got possibly the most dominant car with only one driver. I don't understand why Perez is just being so consistently off the pace. You know, I mean, it's not going to cost Red Bull the constructors. I think we've already, you know, had that one nice and sewn up. But it's going to make it a lot closer than it really should be. And, you know, I'm not going to go as far as, you know, Carl's co-host um, in saying that Checo is completely done. This is the end of his career. He's he's a finished driver. But it's really not looking good. And all the plaudits that we've given Perez not only this season, but in previous seasons, the performances he's managed to, you know, bring out of himself and the races that he's won, they're starting to look all pretty pathetic and pointless now. Yeah, absolutely. Carl, another underperforming driver. Starting P11 tomorrow will be Charles Leclerc for Ferrari, obviously depending on his teammate. Um, for the first time since Turkey in 2020, he's been knocked out before Q3 for consecutive race weekends. He's Laid the blame on Ferrari not giving him the tyres at the right time. What was Leclerc's problem today? I think you're right. I, well, sorry. I think he's not an underperforming driver. I think he's an underperforming team. And Ferrari being Ferrari, as always. And it's, you know, I thought everything was changing Ferrari. And it just hasn't. And, like, where, at what point do they not listen to their drivers and just copy whatever Verstappen's doing and get it so wrong, even trying to copy Verstappen. Um, I just can't get it. And I just want to shoot his engineer in the face because he just is just irritating and doesn't seem to ever, ever listen to what Charles is saying. Um, and just goes, yes, but Verstappen, no, this is the clerk's race. Let the clerk tell you what he's seeing, not what Verstappen's doing in the pit. Um, so, no, absolutely, I am completely, I'm, and I'm not, like, my wife's a Leclerc fan, but I'm not, and I am with Leclerc on this one. It's a, you know, he the team failed him, and he should have, and, and he didn't overly do anything. Okay, he, is he one of the ones possibly getting a penalty? I don't know, if he's impeding. Um, I can't remember. I think he, he was one of the drivers that was impeded. Oh, he was the one that was impeded. I can't, it, it, there were so many of them, I, getting mixed up with which who was where um so yeah he's not going to be impeded he's not going to get penalties so that's you know he's 
he's there or going up as um, signs drops down. Yeah, absolutely. Jonas, staying with Ferrari then, looking at Carlos Sainz, who has currently occupying P8. I joked he was covering every inch of this circuit today, but the amount of times he was caught impeding another driver, like, what was he thinking going so slowly in those braking zones? Uh, honestly, I think uh, I think kind of like Carl said, I think it's Ferrari wearing off on on one of their drivers. Like it's just ridiculous. This is this is not the Carlos signs we saw in a McLaren. It's not the Carlos signs we saw in a Renault. It's not the Carlos signs we saw in a Toro Rosso. Like it, it's completely out of character. Um, I, I don't understand where this is coming from. You you should know being in the sport this long and being this talented of a driver because that's what he is. He's talented. There's no way to slice it. You don't put your car in the middle of the track at a heavy braking zone with a wall right next to the exit of the corner that's notorious for having cars go into it. You just don't stop there. It's a 300 kilometer an hour braking zone. You just don't put your car there. It's dangerous. It's un- it's out of character. It's completely unacceptable. 10 grid places, in my opinion, is the minimum of what he should get. I, I think that's the mi- the bare minimum. He should start from the back. But it's it's so out of character for Carlos, but it's... The problem with that is it's starting to become more of his character, these mistakes and these inconsistencies that we didn't see as frequently in his other teams. Is that the pressure of being in a red suit? I don't really know. Is he just, it's not like he's losing his talent. I don't know where this is coming from. It's a shame. My mom is a huge Carlos Sainz fan, even back from when he was in a, in a McLaren, but it's just, it's unacceptable driving and it's unacceptable behavior on a racetrack and it needs to be penalized. And if they don't, then that's a serious show on the FIA. Yeah, the inconsistency of Carlos Sainz is something that, you know, I think a lot of us have noticed. And I think it speaks volumes that 2021, Carlos Sainz was Grid Talk's driver of the season outside of Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. Um, But since, you know, we've moved to this sort of era of car, like he's just been outperformed by his teammate. And, you know, how far into last season was it that he was still just finishing races in the gravel you know, hopefully gravel is not where he ends up uh, on Sunday, but I guess we'll see. Um, Louis, McLaren appearing in Q3 again this week and looking there or thereabouts with Lando Norris, ultimately finishing P6 and his teammate bringing out that red flag in Q3, qualifying P9, relatively strong qualifying for the Papayan team. Yeah, it was great. Um, I'm not getting my hopes up considering how uh, last race went, so... Um... I'm not going to be going. Yes, yeah, it's, it's time for it's time for them to shine. But in the wet conditions, you can say that this McLaren is incredibly competitive. In Q1, Lando was always up there. He was faster than the Mercedes. He was, you know, right there, just behind the Aston Martins, and that's a really good showing for this McLaren that has been so poor um, for much of the earlier part of this season. Unfortunately, the irony that they're they qualifying then got kind of unraveled by Piastri's crash, which then didn't allow Lando, who was on a was on a faster lap, to uh, not be able to set it, and therefore he's probably a few positions further back than he really should be. But um, you know, you can't you can't really have a go at Oscar. His mistakes that are made. He's still in his rookie season. He's eight races in. Um, you can't judge him because he, you know, he'd already done a, a fantastic job, and Lando yet again just showing how much he can ring out of that car and get it really far up the grid. Absolutely, let's just hope he's still in that position come turn two uh, on the Sunday. We don't want to see Lando Norris boxing again for an- just another McLaren domination of being so far ahead of the track. Oh wait, no, the they're at the back again. Um, but a very strong showing for Mercedes today, Carl. Your favourite, George Russell in P5. Lewis Hamilton reaching P4. Very much right <sighs> place, right time. But were they lucky to get through or was the third row deserved? Mm, the, to be honest, the second row would have been deserved, to be honest. Um, I think that, that Mercedes are back. And as long as Hamilton keeps be- being Russell, I don't really care. Um, I can't, I like, yeah, Hamilton did very well. Um, Russell is um, Russell, and he's in a good car. <laughs> now, he, well, a better car, if not a good car. I still don't think he has. If you put uh, Lando in that car, he would fly past Hamilton, in my opinion. Um, 
but he's still there. He's still British and he's still annoying. You sound so elated for them, Carl. What can I? What Hamilton's can I doing well, and I quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is nice to see. You know, not necessarily a magic button, but Mercedes look stronger, look more resemblant of the team that they were. You know, and considering how underwhelming the start to the season has been, with you know there not being that competition at the front, we just want to see someone take the fight. Um, obviously, with the conditions that we had, not everything was representative today. But yeah, we'll see what happens when we do get some dry running, which just leaves us, Jonah, with the inevitable Max Verstappen starting in P1 on Sunday. It's expected at this point, but you can't deny Max was in the right place at the right time every time today in Canada. The only question now, how much will he win by tomorrow? Oh, my God. Uh Let's be real. Uh, I'm not a Max Verstappen fan. I've never been a Max Verstappen fan. I don't love the guy. He's the best in the world. There's nobody that's as good as he is right now. That's the fact. That's that's it. That's there's. It's not debatable. The string of success is speaks for itself. I get it. He's in the best car in the world, but he is so beyond everyone else's skill level at the moment. He's in. He's locked in. He's in a zone. It's honestly. We're going to look back on it and say it's a treat to watch, right? I guarantee you in 2000, between 2000 and 2005, everybody was sick and tired of Michael Schumacher winning five titles in a row. But now we look back on it and say, wow, what a what a driver, what a time to watch. I think it's going to be the same thing. This guy is beyond everyone else. It's a treat to watch. It gets frustrating because it's just so monotonous, but he really is incredible. How much is he going to win by? Oh my God, 17, 18, 19 seconds tomorrow. I think it's inevitable he wins by at least at maybe 20 seconds. It's just... He's so much better. Knock on wood for uh, us. I want to see a race. I want to have some fun. I want to watch people go at it. The Red Bull has been out of character in terms of reliability this year. It's been pretty good. Um, so it, it does. Is Canada the first race that something goes wrong with that motor? Who knows? If nothing goes wrong with it, I think Max wins by 20 seconds. It's it's. There's nobody that can compete with him, especially when his teammate in the same car is so far back. It's just night and day. It's not even close. Normally, we'd be putting a 20-second lead in a bold prediction category. But at this point, (laughs) I think it falls under a reasonable assumption. But on that note, it is time for some predictions. So, Louis, what's your podium prediction for tomorrow, please? Uh, So, P1, Max, shock. Uh, P2, I'm going to go... Lewis Hamilton and then P3. Um, oh, I just don't know. I'm going to say from P11 to P3 for Charles Leclerc. Interesting. Considering the last time he started outside the points, he didn't even manage to finish inside them. But I guess we'll see. Carl, your podium prediction, please. I'm going very, very boring. Verstappen, Alonso, Hamilton. Like, it's sort of the simple, boring answer, but it's slightly going that way. The opposite of a bold prediction, which we'll get to in a bit, but absolutely, it I can see it happening. Jonah, your podium prediction for tomorrow, please. Uh, well, like I said, Max wins at least 20 seconds, so Max on top. Uh, I think Fernando's going to sneak into P2. Um, I'd love to see it. And honestly, I got to agree with Carl. I think Lewis is going to take P3. I don't want him to, but I think he will. Uh, So I think it's going to go Max, Fernando, and Lewis. Max, Fernando, Lewis. So, Louis, it's time for your bold prediction. Something a bit more unlikely to happen, but it will be amazing if it did. Uh, Nico uh, Hulkenberg podium. I mean, how many is it now that he's just missed out on? It's it's quite a few, and as as I said earlier, he started on pole beforehand and still not scored a podium. So P two, let's see what he can do from there. Yeah, who knows? Carl, your bold prediction, please. Uh, both McLarens getting points. Both McLarens getting points. I mean, it's happened. <laughs> it's bold, <laughs> but it's bold as well. I can see the logic. Absolutely, Jonah. Are you going to continue this trend? What's your bold prediction, please? Uh, well, Carl just took my bold prediction, so my new one is going to be Lando Norris' fastest lap. 
Lando Norris fastest I think, lap. I think Lando snags fastest lap. Yeah. <laughs> is that going to be one of those? I've got such a gap behind. I'll just box at the end, or is that going to be like <laughs> lap thirty six out of sixty, whatever? Um, more likely, he's so far behind that he takes fastest lap. Um, but what would I like to see? It's just like fresh pit stop comes out on sauce, fastest guy on the track, gets a little DRS help, and then he just holds it for the rest of the race. Finishes P seven. Or a little bit of rain <laughs> just dribbles down. Or a little bit of rain. Or a little bit of rain. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and he comes out just after and goes on to softs or something. <laughs> exactly. Um, and at that note as well, that's the uh, predictions. Start of qualifying. Now, I think there's a few drivers that we could absolutely give it to. Louis, let's start off with your dri- your star of qualifying. Uh, I'm going to go with my bold prediction man, uh, Nico Hulkenberg. Um, obvious for very obvious reasons. However, I have just read on Twitter that he has been summoned by the stewards uh, for potentially going too fast under the red flag conditions. This is how he's going to lose the, that podium prediction again, isn't it? Very, very, very possibly. Nico, right, Carl, your start of qualifying. Is it Nico Hulkenberg? Is it someone else? Someone else. It's uh, Lil Album. Um, he is <laughs> just, I think I'm just saying Jonas one again. Um, yeah, and Lil Alvin, I think he's, um, and, and, and the Williams team for going with that strategy of going out in the softs. I think the whole of the Williams team did well there. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. You know, it, you, it's obviously the driver that's on track, but it's the team that are, you know, involved in making decisions unless you are Lando Norris in Russia in 2021. Jonah, your um, star of qualifying, it might still be Alex Albon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is Alex Albon, but for the sake of being different, uh, I'm not going to say Albon. Um, I'm going to say Lando. That McLaren has no business being that high on the grid. <laughs> Let's be real. It's just not good. So I'm going to say Lando just because Carl said Alex. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with with Lando. Uh, all of these young drivers and Nico Hulkenberg. Um, <laughs> Louis, so Grid Talk co-host, where can people find more from you if they want to find more? Well, as, uh, you can find more of me on here, basically. Um, I do host the odd show here and there. Um, and yeah, if you want to see more from me, then uh, Grid Talk is the place to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Carl, you're from the monkey seat. Where can people find that? Uh, just type it into whatever things, monkey seat podcast. <laughs> I should really know this. Tom does all this geeky stuff and I don't do any of this. Look, listen to every other week of Grid Talk. Tom will appear and will tell you exactly where to find us because I have no fucking idea. Sorry, I can't swear. Yeah, I'll apologies for the language, <laughs> Carl. Um, Jonah, the Soft Tire podcast. Where can people find that and yourself? Uh, well, people can find the soft tire on any streaming platform. To be honest, we don't do it anymore much. Like there's one or two episodes now that we, we still do. It got tough. The boys moved to, to Vancouver. So there's a huge time difference now, but, uh, the place I'm most active on is Twitter. If you want to, you want to find me on Twitter. Uh, that's where I post a bunch of F1 memes and predictions and get mad at McLaren for underperforming. So, uh, it's at J O N E R F one underscore on Twitter. Fabulous. And if people want to hear more from me, you can obviously go back through the Grid Talk back catalog as well. But I'm also on the socials at Rubes, R U U B E Z. Put a 001 on if you're looking for me on Instagram. But Grid Talk is available on YouTube, where most episodes are recorded live, as well as Amazon via Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal and Pocket Casts. Just search from on Grid Talk for our huge back catalogue of shows with previews and reactions to the qualifying and the race results. Please consider supporting the channel on Patreon so we can get mics, lights, and better recording equipment. And also make sure you subscribe so you're the first to know when each new weekly episode is released. We'll be back soon tomorrow with plenty more F1 content. Thank you very much for listening to the Grid Talk podcast presented by Bet Online, and goodbye. <laughs>